let's take a uh, quick ride around on the EB2000R. This is the um, electric moped from Artisan, at least it's sold by Artisan in the UK. And um, I picked this up recently to replace uh, a petrol 50cc bike. I'm just a 50cc rider, nothing more than that. And uh, I'm riding this for uh, commuting only, so I'm just travelling three miles to the office in the morning. And uh, three miles back. And that's it, really. So it doesn't have to go far. This is a uh, bike with, well, you can get it in a two, two battery variant, but the two batteries are just connected separately. So the two can't, you know, they don't wire together to produce more range. You have to sort of physically get off the bike and um, plug the batteries in. Anyway, so the uh, purpose of the ride today is just to give you a, a few thoughts on the bike and uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I've been using it for a couple of months now and... Um, I got this from a company called Green Mopeds, uh, based, I think they're based in London, and um, yeah, they, I, I wouldn't generally recommend recommend them as a company. They took my money, and well, since then have been pretty much impossible to get hold of on any issues that I've had, or any quest questions that I've had. I've asked for stuff, and just nobody's got back to me. So. Um, so yeah, no, I don't want to sit here and kind of uh, slag off, a, 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 you know, say bad things about a company, just just bad things about one individual company in the in this country. But uh, my experience has not been good. So, uh, but the, the bike as a whole, well, it has what I would class as average build quality, maybe low to average build quality. Now I understand that a bike like this is going to be made out of uh, plastic because it's got to be light. It increases range if it's light. But uh, this is just, it, it, it's almost like there's some, you know, uh, like, um, some techie guys have, have got like a hub motor and, uh, and a throttle stick and gone, cool, we've got a bike. Oh, br oh crap, how do we build a vehicle around it? and they have no idea on how to actually put a proper vehicle together and and the kind of robustness of of switches and things like that that a vehicle needs so i'll just go over some of the bad stuff because i want to say overall that the bike is really good fun to ride if you if all you want is a 28 30 mile an hour bike the range isn't amazing but it is really good fun to ride it's got good torque it's got good pickup much more than my old 50 cc and uh fun to ride so that is my overall review is that yes it is decent to ride it is fun and the other good thing about this bike is the brakes the uh, the brakes are really really nice uh, disc brakes on both front and back and as a result it's the brakes are smooth they're responsive they're really kind of even everything about the braking on this bike has been really positive uh, for me and I suppose the other good thing is the alarm. I've never had an alarm on a on a moped before, and uh, I find that the alarm side is uh, is excellent. It's it's really responsive. It doesn't it's not doesn't overdo it. So you it's not like you you know someone walks past your bike and farts and the alarm goes off. It's it's not that sensitive. But if someone touches it, it will go off, and it definitely discourages people. I actually have some CCTV footage of a random drunk guy who was walking up the street and uh, he decided to just randomly push my bike and the alarm went off let's take a look at what he did so yeah the alarm definitely discourages people well worth having and it works brilliantly on this bike so there we go it's a really good bike to, really good fun to ride really good brakes good alarm but the build quality is really poor uh the if you look at the mirrors down here and if you can see just the uh, stems from the mirrors to the uh, handlebars 
have already gone rusty. That's two months, two months, and they've rusted up. The uh, the um, high beam switch here, when it gets wet, has been sort of randomly switching between high beam and, and low beam. The indicators are really poor. They're really hard to operate with their gloves on, and uh, they don't make any noise, and uh, the left indicator's failed on me a number of times, and uh, managed to get it working with some electrical contact cleaner, but it's just poor, right? It's just all poor build quality. Uh, and it just generally kind of rattles and bumps around in a way that you wouldn't have thought would you would get from a bike like this. Oh, where is he going? And, uh, yeah, I, I, was, I think coming from a proper bike made by a vehicle manufacturer... It feels like a cheap piece of junk. But once you get used to that, it is, again, I stress, it is really fun to ride. Um, seat's comfortable enough. The whole ride position is comfortable enough. And uh, the lights are weird because the light on the front of this thing has got a, uh, an LED light. But it's also got this, it's also got a tungsten light on there. And you think, what is the point of that? What's the, what's the purpose of having a tung tungsten light on this bike? I just don't don't get it. Surely an LED is good enough, and tungsten is just going to burn energy. So yeah, I think the batteries are 1,500 watt hours each, so 1.5 kilowatt hours each, and each of those they say will last you 25 miles. Now I've just been nervous to uh, to even try it up to 25 miles because I find the pickup and performance drops off fairly soon and maybe that's normal for electric stuff i don't know um it's you, you once you've kind of used maybe a third of the range the p performance of this has dropped off considerably and this little sort of fuel gauge or range meter it's just a voltmeter. it's useless because if you apply a, a lot of kind of um torque to it you'll apply it'll just drop right down and it will immediately start flashing saying your battery's nearly dead or if you're going up a hill and it's a you know you've used maybe less than half of your range and you're going up a steep hill it'll be right down the bottom and say you've your, your battery's about to die but it's not it's just it's a voltmeter so it drops down uh, on the battery when it's under load which uh, is totally totally useless that as, as a range meter that thing is pathetic it doesn't work it doesn't really help you at all <laughs> if i'm honest um Top speed is on a full battery, you might get 32. I've had kind of 32 out of it, but it is advertised as a 28 mile an hour bike and uh, don't expect anything less. You've got a little switch here on the right hand side that switches it between low and high power and low power. It'll do up to 20 miles an hour, which is not that useful. It's okay for um, round, you know, round areas that are extremely low speed, but even round in Bristol here, where most of these areas are 20 mile an hour, you're going to want to have it a little bit more than that, just so if you do need to overtake someone, you uh, you can. A little uh, hook down here, which I've never used, but I guess it allows you to um, hook a bag on or something. And there's plenty of room. I mean, even I'm six foot two, so 188 centimeters, and, uh, and it's a little small for me this bike. But uh, but you know, I can put my put my feet up like this on the. Um, on there and that's pretty comfortable i find that's how i tend to ride it now sort of push myself back on the seat and uh, ride it like that one of the things this bike sells itself on is extra storage so it has a because it's a really wide bike it has extra storage which they say oh yeah it's really handy because you can carry your charger in there and uh, you can pop your charger in there well i wouldn't for two reasons really firstly it is um not waterproof and secondly it's not padded in any way so i guess you could put your own padding in but it's not waterproof so if it rains and your bike isn't covered properly it'll just flood and destroy your charger and that's the same for you know, i keep a usually keep a kind of cloth in there so i can wipe the seat down or something but if it's been raining the cloth is completely soaking wet so what's the point of that i just don't get it anyway i may say that's uh They say that's something that you can, uh, something you can use 
and it's a uh, and it's supposed to be handy because of the fact it's got that storage but can't really use it for anything um, I suppose you can also use the extra storage that um, the if you haven't got the other battery in it you could use that as storage but um, but again it's not a very useful shape the batteries as a whole I've put some foam in the bottom below the batteries because they're just left if they bounce they're just gonna hit the bottom and it's all it all again just comes to come on think about just small things to improve the build quality of this bike because it, it could be so much better with a minimal costing increase and this thing's not cheap as it is I mean this is like three thousand pounds this bike it's not a cheap bike so you expect something a little bit better so down the hill here oh yeah the other thing which uh, I don't know maybe again maybe this is normal for electric but it, it speed limits you as well so I kind of was hoping that maybe down a hill I might be able to get 35 maybe even 38 out of it or something but no even if you put it flat out down a hill it will limit you to a certain speed and um, ooh, can I get through that yeah just about just about so I think I'm on, actually on a 40 mile an hour road now so I'm actually going to be going a little bit slow for the traffic along here not too bad for a short time but I wouldn't like to do it, don't like to do it for too long well there's the uh, Clifton suspension bridge above to give you an idea of where we are and that's that's the problem when you're going 40 see you get people like that flying past you thinking well you know you're a bike at the side I've got a right to go past you and uh, that's not the case really I am a bike on the road and yes I am going a bit slower but hard luck you're just gonna have to wait um, but yeah people will be itching to get past me because I'm doing like it says I'm doing 29 mile an hour now and uh, this is a 40 mile an hour road so that guy was particularly flying now, so now I'm going, I'm going to be going back into a 30 zone very soon. And uh, yeah, you can see as soon as you move out of the way there, look, people are just trying to get past straight away. So you don't really want to be using a bike like this on a uh, in a 40 zone for too too long, unless it's all dual carriageway and people have got plenty of uh, space to get past. It's just annoying for people. Yeah, honestly, these are uh, these in, these indicators here are horrible um, but yeah the pickup pickup pretty good look I mean I'm on a I'm not on a full charge here and I'm up to full speed already it is pretty good and uh, that makes it really really great as a commuter bike and that's exactly what I want it for um, is commuting nothing more so how is it up hills well, Bristol's got some pretty steep hills in it, and it has been absolutely fine. Uh, it generally, with my weight, which is, you know, I'm a good 90, 95 kilos, and, you know, usually carrying a bag, and, um, and obviously you've got the batteries and things like that. With all that weight, I can still maintain sort of a good 25, 26 mile an hour up a pretty steep hill, which is better than I expected. Just a little tour of Bristol here there's the SS Great Britain on the right there SS Great Britain ship wonderful honestly well worth a visit that looks really small from the outside but so big on the inside I mean it's not clearly it's not it's not a, it's not a bloody TARDIS or anything but it feels like that Um, it's a hard ride, definitely, and yeah, it's a really, really firm ride. It bounces along and bounces and crashes about, but that's always how these bikes are. Um, they're not super soft rides. I mean, yeah, you are rattling along, but yeah, I'm going up a fairly steep hill now. This is a, it's not like Constitution Hill on the left here. I think is that, is that what it's called, Constitution Hill? Yeah. Constitution Hill that road on the left there that's a bit that's a bit steeper but this is pretty steep and if you look I can easily easily maintain 20 mile 28 mile an hour no problem 
so perfectly good. There's plenty of power in that hub motor, and uh, and that's what makes it good enough. You know, it's it's yeah, it's got its little niggles and it's got its annoyances through build poor build quality and stuff like that. But the actual ride itself is fine. So uh, in overall, would I recommend it? Well. Would I buy it again? Uh, I'd probably go for something different, I think. I'm not sure. So, so on the whole, I'm not sure I can recommend it. If you really like the this kind of Vespa look, and remember that it's a Vespa look, but it is all plastic and doesn't really... Yeah, it's not, it's not exactly a sort of fantastic build quality or anything. If you go up close, it just sort of looks quite cheap. Um, from a distance though it does really look the part and if you're only if that's all you're after and that's what you want you really want that kind of look then it's the right one for you because it is it is good enough but um i do feel that there are better models out there and better quality out there for similar or maybe a little more money but not much more um It is. I do enjoy it, though. I have to say, I do. Oh, the, 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 there's no clock on it as well. That's another thing that bugs me. No clock, and the thermometer there it says eight degrees. It doesn't. I've never seen it go below four, even when it's been minus two. It, it doesn't go below four degrees. So, completely ignore that as well. That's a complete load of rubbish. They, uh, you, you might have seen some older models with uh, this here as a um as an analog sort of old style rotary odometer and uh and they've replaced that now they've changed that for this digital display but it, they haven't changed any of the functionality really it doesn't really offer anything more they've just slapped in a, a digital display instead of you know in the same spot that the analog one was it's not like they've really changed out much at all Thanks to the guys at EcoMove in uh, Bristol. I've been uh, down to see them this morning because they're looking at solving some problems for me where the indicator's broken and the, this whole panel, this little, this sort of the switches here are just not not working quite to spec. And uh, yeah, so Simon and the team there were very helpful with me this morning. Um, green mopeds have really done what they've had to do what they're basically legally obliged to do but um absolutely nothing more so yeah anyway i will leave you and you can enjoy the rest of the trip back at white ladies road in bristol i'll leave you with a bit of music and uh, my little ride on the artisan ev 2000r